morning everyone, my name is Sarah and welcome or welcome back to another video. Today is another gloomy, incredibly rainy day and I have the day off. So I thought, perfect opportunity to begin a reading vlog. The first book is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. I read her newest release, uh, The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, a couple of months ago and I absolutely loved it. I ate it up. So when I saw this book in the charity shop for like two quid, it was mine. This is the first book in a historical fantasy trilogy set in 18th century in the Middle East. And I believe our protagonist is going to be Nari, who is a um, con artist living in Cairo. It doesn't seem like she believes in magic, but it also seems, as with many people that don't take the necessary precautions, um, she ends up conjuring a spirit or a djinn and ends up in a magical city, the city of brass, um, Devabad. So this sounds right up my street for a day like today. Um, I also have just started an audiobook called Enchantment, written by Catherine May, which is all about rediscovering a sense of wonder or enchantment with the natural world and embrace the mental well-being and clarity that that can bring. It's written post-pandemic and from what I've listened to so far, it seems to be mostly about overcoming tiredness and a lot of anxiety born from the pandemic and otherwise um, and just sort of reconnecting with our roots uh, through nature. So I'm really excited. Those are the two books I've got lined up for the week ahead. For now, I've got a couple of hours to kill. I'm waiting for this rain to calm down a little bit before I run my errands today, which is the perfect time to start making some headway with this. You would be forgiven for thinking that I never left. However, you can see it's a brand new mug. We didn't have this mug before. I've got a little orange here. I'm gonna have a little snack. I'm gonna update you with my reading so far. So I've just come back from doing errands, which how many times have I mentioned that now? Like five. And it meant that I was listening to the audiobook for a good hour and a bit. Um, which means I've made some significant headway. It's proving to live up to my expectations of it. I really am a sucker for like a well-being, self-help-esque book, kind of disguised as a memoir um, that's all about the natural world. I'm really sorry, by the way, if you're sound sensitive because I feel like this orange peeling was maybe not that pleasant. Or maybe it was, and this is like ASMR, I don't really know. Anyway, I'm really liking the tone of voice. I didn't read Catherine May's um, or listen to Catherine May's other book, uh, Wintering, which people seem to really, really enjoy. But this one is hitting home a little bit more for me. It's talking about anxiety and like overcoming obstacles that either were there but have appeared differently since the pandemic or that you just aren't aware of all the time or things that you thought you'd overcome and maybe you actually haven't. She's using a lot of personal anecdotes, which again is a tool that I really like in these kinds of books. And yeah, it turns out that I'm almost halfway through the audiobook now, which I didn't realize. I think it must be quite short. In terms of City of Brass, I'm not that far through. They're about 40 pages in. I'm really liking it so far. We've just had the first kind of action sequence. We've met, I've just immediately forgotten their name. Mm -mm. Let's see. We've just met Afshin and Ifrit, who seems to be very dark and mysterious. Um, and it looks like we've, we're about to go on a quest or about to go on a mission to uncover something. Clearly Afshin is a djinn that Nahi has accidentally conjured, classic. And they've just escaped a very ghoulish encounter in a cemetery or, or a system of tombs, I forget, but I am liking it. It doesn't have the exact same tone as Amina al-Sarafi, 
um, which is good. I would be quite upset if it was exactly the same, but I'm pleased that I'm still really enjoying Chakraborty's writing in a different context. She clearly writes this kind of historical fantasy really well. So I'm really excited to read a little bit more after I have this orange, which is delicious by the way. And I'm sure I'll check in with you when I actually have something of a bit more substance to say. For now, it's orange time. another hundred or so pages. Turns out that the previous character I thought I'd met, Afshin, that's not his name, that's just his title. His real name is Dara or Dara and he seems moody. <laughs> uh, so it seems like Jin have two titles that they can have, um, either Jin or Deva, which makes sense because they're in Devabad, the city, or they're on their way to Devabad. I have, however, met the other narrator in the story. I didn't realise it was a dual storyline. Exciting. And his name is Ali, and he is a highborn... I think he's actually... Yeah, he's the prince of Devabad. And right now we just seem to be learning about the politics of this world and just getting a, a glimpse into the world building, which Chakraborty is very good at doing, as we know. Nari as a character is um, endearing but a little bit frustrating and I'm also getting the sense that her and Dara, there might be some romance going on there, they're very flirtatious and now that Ali has been introduced, they're both interested in Nari's heritage. Ali doesn't know who Nari is yet though, they haven't crossed paths. From what we know from Dara, the djinn, Nari seems to be a descendant of a line of devas um, called the Nahids, who are a specific like subsect of jinn who are really talented in healing and a group of like rebel devas that were eliminated or people thought they were eliminated a long time ago have been trying to track down her bloodline and kill them all for some reason. So I'm guessing that these three characters are gonna meet. I can smell a love triangle brewing. I could be wrong, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, there's a bit of violent behavior going on right now. <laughs> I am enjoying the world building and the way that the wealth disparity is set up is very interesting and this idea of mixed blood and pure blood. Something that we see quite a lot of in fantasy writing, but it's always an interesting concept to explore. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm going to read a little bit more and then I'm going to call it a night. So I'll see you tomorrow. Hello again. I'm feeling rough today. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yesterday was a difficult mental health day and today is a day for me to be gentle with myself and that means doing things that I like and <laughs> that feed my soul and that includes reading. I think it's time for another check-in, specifically about City of Brass. So let's start with the things I'm enjoying. So I feel like the political setup of the book is the most interesting aspect. Um, it's so intricate, there's so much tension between the Davers, um, who are the higher class, wealthy, um, and notably the ruling class, and then the Shaftis. Hello, this is editing Sarah, quickly dropping in to say that it's not Shafti, it is in fact Shafit. Um, apparently I can't read, as you were. <laughs> who are not only the more impoverished class, but also are viewed by the Davas as having dirty blood because of their mixed heritage of human and Deva blood. Ali, our sweet prince, 
um, seems to be the only one talking sense in the fact that he believes that they all should be treated equally, regardless of their heritage, um, which apparently is like a really wild view to hold, predominantly I think because he is part of the royal family. But it's really fun getting to learn about the political setup of the world through Ali because he's a very well-meaning and endearing but also very naive character and clearly just wants to believe the best in people and his is my favourite perspective in the book. There's just so much more world building, it's so much more intricate and you can sense that this book is really trying to build a solid foundation for the next two books that will follow and Ali despite his flaws is a character that you really, I just find him so endearing and you can see that there's a lot of potential and growth there. Nari's storyline on the other hand is, I don't know, it doesn't really feel like much plot is actually happening, like they're not even in Devabad yet, they're still trying to get there and literally every chapter about her is just another mythological being trying to kill her and Dara it's not really it's not hitting the same for me um, and just kind of being like dumped information about another part of the world as we go like I feel like when they actually get to the city then the story like the, the mission gonna actually happen but I'm almost halfway through and they haven't even got to Devabad yet we haven't even seen the city of brass through their eyes. Then there's also the like blossoming romance or like sexual tension for a better term I guess between Nari and Dara which is like I love the enemies to lovers trope but this one just seemed so quick like they hated each other for two days then they were like checking each other out and then they were being really snarky and horrible to each other again and then now they're like making out, are they in love? I, it was very quick and honestly like I'm finding it kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's just me. Anyway, I really want them all to meet. I want Nari and Dara and Ali to all meet and then like so we can actually figure out what they're going to do collectively and like I'm intrigued to see what is going to happen next and that being said, let's find out. <laughs> Good evening again. I thought I would check in super quickly before I head to sleep. Um, I read a little bit more of City of Brass. They have now arrived in Devabad, you'll be pleased to know, and I'm enjoying it. I don't have much else to report. I have, however, listened to quite a lot of Enchantment by Catherine May, and I am really liking it. I mentioned in the previous clips that I'm having a tough mental health stretch right now. It's such a comforting book, especially to have it in an audiobook format, to have someone basically tell you their life experiences. It's just so wonderful. I feel really seen. <laughs> and there's also some just really lovely anecdotes and ideas around the creative struggles, really, like the struggles of artists and and she's talking from her experience as a writer um, but it's applicable to everyone. I find it really almost disheartening when I see other people saying how the creative process just comes really naturally to them and she has this really great um, quote where she relates it to not feeling drawn to something but instead having to actively cut through the under bush like you're trekking through something and it's not easy it's difficult and sometimes it can feel like everyone else is not struggling and that it's all coming really easily to them and the fact of the matter is that I think for a lot of us that's just not the case yeah that's just one of the many moments that have really resonated with me when I've been listening to this but yeah I just feel really comforted by this book um I feel like it's come at the right time and I've got about an hour and a half left to listen to and I'm really looking forward to it but also I think I'm going to be a bit sad when it's over but that'll be something for me to look forward to for tomorrow. For now I am going to say good night and I'll see you tomorrow.
breast last night. I have thoughts. <laughs> okay, as suspected, when all of our three main characters, when Ali, Nari, and Dara all met, when they finally were all in Devabad, uh, the plot actually really started kicking up a notch. And thank goodness, because I was beginning to lose hope. So I want to start with the positives of this, because there are a lot. I really admire that the three main characters are all very complex and layered, and there are redeeming qualities to absolutely all of them that make them feel really real and human. For every single one of them, there was a point in the book where I was rooting for them. But similarly, they all have downfalls, they all have areas or things that they do that mean that you're either <laughs> deeply unsettled or just concerned by the things that they say or do. And I think being able to have that dynamic exist within each character, but then also have it within their relationships to the other characters is very impressive. I also stand by what I said before in that I think that the political system of the world is the most compelling aspect of the book. I really wanted to learn about the different tribes, about the war, about the history and the economic systems of the city of Devabad. And Ghassan, the king, is a truly fantastic character. Terrifying, but I loved every single scene that he was in because he is such a powerful and manipulative and at times cruel ruler, but you can see the mechanics of how his brain is working. You can see how he is playing the citizens and the court and covering things up just enough. And he really is a very intimidating and powerful character and you understand people's fear of him. He's so fantastic and horrible. The ending of this book too was insane. I feel like every ounce of drama and political twists and action and battle scenes that I wanted throughout the rest of the book was condensed into the last 50 pages or so. And I know that sounds strange because earlier I was saying how the beginning of the book was just Dara and Nari being attacked by random creatures, but that's how it felt. It felt random, it felt like it wasn't leading to anything, and then the last few pages, everything made sense, and I think that's what was so frustrating to me. Chakraborty can clearly create these scenarios where the fighting and the economic understanding and the interpersonal relationships are delivered in a much more natural and flowing way, um, but we didn't get that until 300, 400 pages into the book. Like, I still can't quite get over how long it took for us to get to Devabad, and how even when they got there, as the readers, we still didn't know very much about Dara and Navi, and similarly, they didn't know very much about each other, which then made the romance coming out of nowhere even more weird. <laughs> However, the ending was incredibly intriguing. Those last few scenes with Ali, if you've read the book, I'm not going to say anything else, but like, yeah, I'm hooked. So I have to confess that despite the flaws and despite all the things that I didn't like about this, I really want to find out what happens next. And so I will probably read the next instalment. And I'm hoping as well that because we now know the world quite well and we know the characters quite well as well that the pacing will hopefully be a little bit more to my liking because the actual world of Devabad and the kind of tapestry that she has woven together is so interesting and wonderful. Anyway, this morning I read The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse and I just I have to show you inside. This is a reread and it maybe takes only half an hour or so to read, but it's so sweet and comforting and it's kind of just a hug in a book and I really needed that today. I have also very nearly finished Enchantment by Catherine May. I'm still finding it really inspiring in a gentle way and comforting and I think I've got about half an hour, 40 minutes left to enjoy. Anyway, I'm going to go finish my tea, get on with a bit of work and things that I have to get done, and I'll check in in a little bit.
good evening. Dinner has been made and enjoyed and I have also finished Enchantment by Catherine May which means that this is the end of the vlog. I wrapped up my thoughts on City of Brass earlier so all that remains is to give a final overview and my final thoughts on Enchantment. This was such a fulfilling and heartwarming read. It was full of gentle motivation and encouragement and a deep understanding of the intricacies and the difficulties of our everyday lives. Her description of being re-enchanted is very similar to things I've heard about reconnecting with your inner child, the roots that ground us and the things that feed our soul. And I have to admit that this book fed my soul this week. It was described as a balm in the blurb and I couldn't agree more. And I'm actually contemplating purchasing a physical copy so that I can refer back to it more easily because I feel like this is something that I will want to reread. Similarly, the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse is always a delight to pick up. And I'm so glad that I got to sneak this into my reading this week. So let me get the stats. Overall, with my two initial reads, I have read the equivalent of about 750 pages. I haven't counted uh, Charlie Maxey's book purely because most of the pages are illustrations rather than writing, so I don't know whether that counts. Although, as an illustrator myself, I always make the argument that illustration is a visual language. So, no, actually, let me add those pages in. So, with my new calculations, that would make it 897 pages in total, which is really not bad at all. I'm actually really chuffed with that. I'm really pleased. Anyway, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you soon in another one. Take care.